Yeah, you're on. Good morning. Good morning. No, I'm not. Still at the same. Tap on. Good morning. Good morning, ACS family. ACS uh, Eagle Nation. What's happening? Welcome to a brand new day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are marching toward the end of our school term. And so we are excited not only that spring has sprung, that school is almost over, but that each morning we get a brand new time, brand new choice, uh, brand new opportunity, rather, to get God's brand new mercies. Okay, so we have been discussing the fruit of the Spirit. And we talked about them all. But the fruit of the Spirit, it's a lovely letter from Paul to the letter of Galatia. And literally, Paul is saying to the, the, the Church of Galatia, and Paul is literally saying, well, if you want to know what it looks like, if you want to know what a believer looks like, then this tree must bear this fruit. And he gives us these nine ideas, these nine concepts. And so this week we are discussing kindness. Okay. So we're going to go to one of our middle school scholars. What's up, Gavin? What's up? What's up? How are you? Good. How are good. you? Speak up so the people can hear you. This is Godwin Clark, everybody. Say good morning. Good morning. Say good morning to uh, you. Good morning. You're famous now, Godwin. You're ACS famous. So, Godwin, what are some ways uh, that you, uh, as a young believer, a young scholar, can be kind to people? Give me some examples of kindness that you can exhibit in your life. Uh, some ways that I can be kind to others is giving compliments to others and being generous. Okay, being kind, being kind of by giving confidence and being generous, all good things, all good things. Uh, are there any other ways that you can see that you could exhibit kindness? Mm, not really. Not really. All right, well, that's a good way to start it. So you heard it first here, come on back here. Oh, we have a new producer today. Richard, Richard, put your hand in front of the camera and wave. Richard's our producer today, Richard Williams, one of our, our seventh grade scholars. So thank you, Richard, for your help today. So today we will discuss kindness. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear gracious, dear amazing, dear beautiful Father, Lord, as we stand out here uh, in, in our in front of our school, oh God, and we're able to hear the birds chirping, but we're able to feel your son uh, on our backs, oh God. We thank you for this world that you created, Lord, with all this and all its flaws. Oh God, we thank you that you've given us this brand new opportunity, this fresh anointing, a brand new day. And we ask that today we don't take it lightly, that we use this day not only to uh, give our, our best selves, uh, to worship you and all that we have and do, oh God, uh, to be effective in our classroom space, to be kind at our homes and with our friends as well as at school. But God, that we take this day just to breathe in and breathe out your beauty, your excellence, your love. God, we're thankful for you. God, we're thankful for your sacrifice for us on the cross. And we acknowledge that we need you in every facet of our lives. It's in your mighty name and you, in your precious son that we pray together. Amen? Amen. All right, people, you know what it is? It's chapel time. Let's go. Good morning. Happy Monday, everybody. Today, actually if I'm not mistaken, is our last chapel of the 2020-2021 school year. And I'm very excited. It's been an awesome year. We've learned a lot. I hope you've learned a lot. I hope you've had fun. As Mr. Sylvain said, we've been studying the fruit of the spirit. And today, the fruit of the spirit is kindness. Thank you, Godwin, for stepping in to tell us some things that we can do to be kind. I just want to also remind you that there's a difference between kindness and being nice. Being nice is kind of like the right thing to do when you see certain situations, but kind is taking it a step further. For example, if I realize, say one of my coworkers, if, if they didn't have, have lunch, um, and I, I kind of sort of know they might be hungry. I wouldn't say, oh, I hope you get something to eat. I may just find a way to secretly make sure they have something to eat. That's the difference. Being kind is going that extra mile. Now, back in the day, I used to be a youth pastor at my home church. And one of my favorite parts of that job was the children's Bible story. And when I thought about the fruit of the spirit for kindness, 
I thought about the scripture from 2 Samuel, the ninth chapter, around the first verse, the first few verses, and it was about David. And he said, is there anybody in the house of Jonathan that I can be kind to, that I can show kindness to? And he remembered somebody that pointed him in the right direction. I won't tell the whole story. I found a really cool video that will tell the video, tell the story for you. So on that note, we're going to turn it over to Christian and he's going to show you the story. I need you to listen real good because I don't want you to miss it. It's a great story on kindness. Here we go. Welcome to our clubhouse. Now you're on your way. You'll have so much fun here while you learn today. Welcome to our clubhouse. Hello there. Would it be the same here without you, 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 you at our clubhouse? Who just gets crackers? And Ben has an allergy, so he gets fruit snacks. Wait, 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 no, that's not right. It's Jess who has the allergy, and Ben who gets crackers. Whew, the goodie bags are done. Oh, hi, guys, it's me, Maddie. I was just getting ready for the friendship day party I'm planning with my friend Brooklyn. The room is all cleaned up. Everyone has a goodie bag. I even took a big nap so I'd have lots of energy for the friendship day party. But there's still a few things left to do on the to-do list. Scratch that. There's still a lot of things left to do. I just can't do all this on my own. Who? Who? Did you hear that? It's Ollie. Hello, Maddie. Who? Who? Looks like you might need a little help. Is there anything I can do for you? Yes, Ollie. I've been working really hard for my friendship day party, but there's still a lot left to do. Working alone can be hard, that's true. But the Bible tells us that it's easier for two. You'll see in the Bible. Just follow me through. Ooh. Ooh. Follow me through. Who? Follow me through. Ollie's got another Bible story for me and for you. Oh, hello, friends. I'm Justin the Mailman here to deliver the story mail to the clubhouse. Do you want to hear a Bible story about two good friends? Awesome. Let me just load up the mailbox. There we go. We're all ready. Okay, so you probably already know these two friends. One guy's name starts with a D. Do you know what his name is? David, that's right. And his friend that starts with a J is... Jonathan, good job. Now, do you remember this guy? King Saul? Now you tell me, was King Saul a nice guy or a big meanie? A big meanie, that's right! Now King Saul did not like David. So when Jonathan found out the king wanted to hurt David, he told David to run away. But before he left, David and Jonathan made a promise to be friends forever. And David promised that he would help Jonathan's family for the rest of his life. Well, lots and lots of years go by, and now there's a new king. Are you ready to meet him? Let's all blow pretend trumpets for the king. Introducing King David. That's right. David became the new king, and he remembered that he promised to help Jonathan's family. So he told his servant to look everywhere to find someone from Jonathan's family. So the servant looked here and he looked 
there. And then he found someone. Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth. That's a big name. Can you try to say it with me? Mephibosheth. Let's say it again. Mephibosheth. It's kind of fun to say. Now, let's say it really loud. Mephibosheth! <laughs> Good job. Now, Mephibosheth couldn't walk. He needed help. And King David knew that good friends help each other. So he brought him to the palace and gave him a house and a place at his dinner table every night. Yay for King David and yay for, say it with me one more time, Mephibosheth. That's right, everyone. Good friends are the best helpers. Oh, hi, Ollie. Tell me, who gives us good friends? God gives me good friends. Yes, it's true. I want to hear it from all of you. Can you tell me who gives you good friends? God gives me good friends. Yes, that's the truth, friends. You better believe it. I'll see you next time. So there. Okay, I hope you got that. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, the story is a little bit glitchy on this end, so I, I want to just kind of recap it in case you missed any parts of it. But as I stated in 2 Samuel, the ninth chapter, the first verse, David remembered his friendship with Jonathan. They were like buddies. And Jonathan's father was King Saul. And as the guy in the story said, King Saul was a, a big meanie. And so David was run off, but he remembered his promise to his friend to always stay connected to Jonathan, that Jonathan would be his friend for life. So some time passed and David remembered what he had said to Jonathan, that they would remain friends. And he started thinking, he put his thinking cap on and said, hmm, I wonder is there in, in anybody in Jonathan's family that I can show kindness to? And so he looked and he looked and he looked and he came across this servant by the name of Ziba. And Ziba informed David that Jonathan had a son by the name of, remember the name? Mephibosheth. That's a name among names. Mephibosheth. Okay. But Mephibosheth was crippled. He couldn't walk. Walk. So David went back to um, Mephibosheth, he found him and he took care of him and he made sure that he did not want for anything. He made sure he had a seat at his table. That meant he was eating real good food every day. He was taken care of, he had nothing to worry about. So David specifically said, is there anybody that I can What? what Maybe, or if you decide, and maybe they don't have a jacket and you have a closet full that you don't wear all the time, maybe you can ask mommy and daddy if you can share. Or if we're at school and we have textbooks, maybe one of your friends doesn't have a textbook, it would be kind to share. So I want you to think about how can, how can you be kind? Who can I be kind to today? And one thing about kindness, it doesn't cost a thing. It costs nothing to be kind, but it is a condition of the heart. And so I pray that God would touch our hearts, that we would have a desire to be kind, just like David. As we get ready to turn it over to Dr. Griffin, I do need to make sure, especially on this last day of chapel of the school, that you already know who Jesus Christ is, that you've accepted him into your heart and asked him to be the Lord of your life. If you haven't done that, because we can't take for granted that everyone has, I'd like to offer you that opportunity now. Just repeat after me. Dear Lord, I need you. Please come into my heart and make my heart your home. I realize that I am a sinner. I make mistakes, but I believe your grace 
can save me, even me. I believe Jesus is the son of God, that he died on the cross for me. Now, for now being the Lord of my life. All right, if you prayed that prayer, you are now in the body of Christ. You need to make sure you stay in your word, read your Bible, say your prayers, and stay connected to others who can make sure your spiritual journey, you're on the right track, okay? All right, if you're watching us online, please make sure you like this video, tag, share it. Uh, that's how we let other people know who we are at Arlington and what we're doing. On that note, I'm going to turn it over to our principal, Dr. Kelvin Griffin. God bless you. I love you all. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Happy Monday to you. Welcome back to Arlington for our face-to-face -face and blended scholars. And of course, to our virtual scholars, you know, it's business as usual. We were virtual for a couple of days because, you know, of the of the gas gasoline crisis, but we're back. You know, it has been a year, hasn't it? 2021 has been a tumultuous ride, but we have persevered. We have trusted God in every step of the way, and we are making it to the finish line. Congratulations to our seniors. They are finally finished. They are complete. They are done. All of our seniors took their final exams on Friday. By Friday, all the grades have been in. We're updating transcripts and we will soon be naming our valedictorian and our salutatorian. So underclassmen, that means K-4 through 11th grade, Pray for your seniors because they are about to embark upon a season of their lives where they are going to transition from being students to adults and they need your prayers. Beta Club induction members, listen, uh, I know COVID-19 had an effect on our uh, Beta Club induction program we had planned for you. It was disappointing, I'm sure it was. It was disappointing for us. A lot of hard work went in into the preparation of, the, of that program from our officers, Keturah and Christian, to uh, uh, the overseers of the program, um, Miss um, Miss Mays, um, um, Miss um, Lord have mercy, I'm, I'm I'm having a brain fart at the moment. Um, Sarge Miller, Miss Lomax, a lot of work has gone into the preparation of that program and and even you your academic prowess you have taken the time to really you know prepare yourselves for that moment well you know satan didn't rob you because we're going to actually do our induction program on wednesday um, at this same time but it's going to be virtual unfortunately mom dad grandma grandpa sisters and brothers they won't be able to witness that moment with you but they will be able to experience that moment with you because we will be airing it virtually we will be streaming that induction program for you um when i also say that our last dress down day is wednesday so that means for a small fee of two dollars you can dress down and wear what you want, but only Wednesday. All the rest of the days, you are required to be in normal attire, like today, chapel, shirt, tie, blazer, cardigan, pullover. Tomorrow, polo shirt, khaki. Wednesday, for $2, you're dressed down. Thursday, polo shirt, khakis. Friday, uh, spirit wear. OK, we'll also see our seniors in the building on Friday as well. A lot of information coming down the pipeline. I know that, you know, my segment is a little longer than than normal uh, because there's a lot of information coming down the pipeline scholars. So we want to make sure that we stay tuned. Listen to your teachers. Pay attention to the weekly information they send. 
pay very tell your your parents to pay very close attention to the emails that we're sending because all the information is in reference to the closing of the school year we don't want you to miss anything we want to make sure that you get everything even as it relates to your report cards senior seniors as it relates to your transcripts um yearbooks a lot of information is coming at you stay tuned stay alert okay well that does it for me um we pray that your day is productive and we pray that your week is even more productive we love you make it a great day bye okay.